In this video, I want to discuss how the, you calculate for power in a delta configuration. There will be other videos on how to calculate power in a Y configuration, but in this one we are going to deal with a delta one and not a grounded system, just a completely ungrounded delta system. So here we have, starting out with our basic delta configuration, here we have our three windings that are all 120 degrees out of phase. You notice that there is no ground point at all on this. You can have a grounded corner point, but we're not going to discuss that. Or you can ground a center tap here. Again, that is another discussion for another video. But in this discussion, we're just going to be looking at how we calculate the power from this transformer. And the reason why I say it's a transformer is you can tell by the coils here as opposed to the resistors, which would denote some sort of load. Now, just off the top, if we're calculating power in a three-phase delta system, there's two formulas we can use. We can use VA, which is power, is root 3, or 1.73, times E-line times I-line. So we're going to need to learn how to calculate the E-line and I-line, which you have done from other videos, I'm sure, but we'll go over it again in this one. Or you can use the formula VA is equal to 3 times E-phase times I-phase. Any way you look at it, you're going to end up with the exact same answer. Now let's get started. So I turn this transformer on, and right now, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use easy numbers. I know 120 is not a very common three-phase voltage, but just it's a common voltage for us to use. So I'm just going to say I've got 120 on this phase, 120 on this phase, 120 on this phase, which will give me 120 on this line, 120 on this line, 120 on this line. So in a three-phase delta system, your E line is equal to your E phase. So your voltage across the phase is equal to your voltage across the line. So let's put that off, uh, off in the corner here. E line is 120 volts. E phase is 120 volts. Now let's say that down the line here, we've got a load that is drawing 10 amps from each of these windings. So we now know that the line, or sorry, the phase current is 10 amps. But when we're discussing the current for the line, it's going to be different because we have this current coming to this point and this current coming to this point at different angles. So we have to add them vectorally, covered in another video. But we know that this current and this current is not going to equal 10 amps on this line. So we do know that we take this current times this current, sorry, this current times root 3, 1.73, and you'll get your line current which is, in this case, 17.3 amps. So now we have our I phase, which is 10 amps, and our I line, which is 17.3 amps. So I line, let's put this off on the corner here, is 17.3, I phase is 10 amps. So now what we can do is we can use those formulas that we talked about earlier in the video to see if they all come out to be fairly close to one another. So let's take VA, is equal to 1.73 times E line times I line. E line 120 times 17.3 times root 3 will give us our answer. And there we go. We end up with roughly 3600 VA. 1.73 times 120 times 17.3 gives us 30,591.8 VA. But for all intents and purposes, let's just kick it up to 3600. So let's use this formula. The VA is equal to 3 times E phase times I phase. So let's take 3 times 120 times 10 gets you 3600 VA. So we've just basically proven, I know that you're going to argue with me over these, what does this work out to be, 9 amps or 9 VA. But trust me when I say that 3600 VA and 3591.8 VA are pretty well the same thing. So there you go. We've walk through how to calculate power on a delta system. There's two ways you can do it. VA is equal to E line times I line times root three, or VA is equal to three times E phase times I phase.